What's up, everybody? Alex Boylan here, co-founder of Dream Jobbing. And we are very excited. A good friend of ours of Dream Jobbing, Michael Can, is here with us today to do five questions with. Thanks for being here, man. I'm psyched to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, Michael has an awesome story. He was an extremely successful uh, investment banker and left that world completely behind and now is the owner and CEO of Wine Country. And I'm sure I'm going to butcher this, but the <laughs> way I describe Wine Country, it's like Airbnb of the wine world. So if you're booking an experience, a place to stay, maybe needing to watch some inspirational content in the wine space, you're probably going through winecountry.com or one of its many portals. Is that fair enough? It's pretty good. Pretty close. Not bad? We'll get there. All right. So first question, Michael. <laughs> Can you walk us through um, why you made that transition? You know, being the successful investment banker, crushing that world, then all of a sudden being like, you know, I'm going to go run a wine company. <laughs> I, I just didn't love banking. I mean, that's simply put. I mean, if, when you look at um, building companies versus selling them, it's a lot more fun to build them. Um, and it just wasn't something that I was passionate about. I liked, uh, I liked working with different people in different areas and, and banking was kind of static. So um, moved into an entrepreneurial career and landed Wine Country Media somewhere <laughs> along the way. <laughs> well, well break, let's go into Wine Country. Like, what is your favorite part about running and building that uh, business? All the stuff we get to do. I mean, yeah, well, we, get to, we get to taste world-class wines. We get to go to world-class wine regions. We get to eat incredible food, meet amazing people, see beautiful scenery. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, you drive to your office on a daily basis and you feel like you're driving through a postcard. I mean, it's hard not to sit back and be like, what am I doing? Am I getting paid for this? Yeah. Um, so it's a blast. It's the, the people you meet, the places you get to go, the things you get to taste. Uh, and oh, by the way, you're building a business at the same time. It's awesome. It's, a great it's, like, it's like, you know, we, Lisa and I talk about all the time at Dream Job, I mean, in, in the production side of our business, we love it because of the worlds you get to explore. Yeah. You know, it's for sure. It's uh, really fun. So obviously it's, you're not drinking wine all day long, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all the glamour that some people might see in that aspect. Um, um, what are some of the challenging aspects? What are the things that like are not fun about running wine yeah. country? So a couple things. When you look at our business, a couple things have happened over the last five years. First and foremost, the world has changed when it comes to travel, when it comes to wine, when it comes to food. Um, things have changed in a way and businesses have not necessarily been ready for that change. So what people want, where they want to get it, how much they want to spend, all that's changed quite a bit. So adapting to your business to that has been a challenge. The second thing is we've had um, three natural disasters in five years. So coming yeah. into this, we've had, uh, we had an earthquake and we've had two major fires and then tack on a flood at the end of that. So you've had a region that's been, you know, Napa Valley and Sonoma County that have kind of been besieged by that, plus a changing world has made it pretty difficult to figure out how can we continue to support the businesses in our region while we're evolving our own business at the same time. Wow. So, yeah, it's been, it, it's that's been, definitely some it, challenges. Has been it has been yeah. tough. Is that, yeah. And building any business is tough, but when you're dealing with like, you know, natural um, disasters, what interesting wrenches that put into the, the process. Yeah. I mean, it's also forcing us to reinvent how, how we serve our users. So our users are our audience, people that come either looking for travel, they're looking for you know, places to visit, wine, food, content recommendations. The way in which we serve that information oftentimes has to be changed because of what people have seen either through the popular press or through media. So when the fires came in, you have this spectacular coverage across the world and most, not most, a lot of people thought, hey, Napa Valley and Sonoma County have burned down. Our job from a company perspective was to work with both the businesses that we cover regionally and retell the story, recreate a reason to why to, to come and visit the region. And I think that that has actually helped shape a new opportunity to bring a new set of visitors into the region. Um, so it's been on one hand challenging, but on the other hand, really fun in a way that, you know, it's never fun to come out of that, but it's been fun to reinvent the business. Oh, that's awesome. So what's, um, what's next for wine country? <laughs> And what do you, you know, as the leader of this company, um, how do you make that stuff happen? So we took a business that essentially was a digital yellow pages for Napa Valley and Sonoma County, and we're trying to build a brand around this concept of wine country. And the brand is to offer users more than just resources when they're looking to travel. So we've got a travel division now for both consumers and corporate and group. We added an e-commerce shop called Wine Country Shop where we sell products made by small product makers. My favorite's the dog leash. We can get into that later. That or the champagne <laughs> saver, which we call the Hennessy saver. That's from uh, Lisa Hennessy. Exactly. Uh, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll cut some footage <laughs> in of Lisa. And, uh, um, we have um, 
uh, the entertainment division, which we're building with you guys, with the winemaker. So we've taken what, again, was a little regional travel site, and we're trying to create a, a brand that allows the user to touch our platform in multiple ways, and then take that globally. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Super fun, super fun. All right, fifth and final question for you, Michael, and this comes from one of our Dream Jobber students. Their question is, if they're thinking about starting, you know, they're younger, so it wasn't so much about buying a building, starting a business, how do they make the decision? How should they go through the decision process of um, what to build? Sure. Like, you know, what, you know, anyway, sorry. Uh, yeah, I think the, the absolute first thing is, what do you enjoy doing? Nothing is worse than building a business, doing something that sucks or that is, you know, building a business is really hard, but finding something you enjoy doing and then figuring out what does your audience want? What are they going to pay for that, right? So let's mm -hmm. take um, take a, uh, an experience that a winery owns, right? If, you know, if you're going to found a winery, first and foremost, you better love making wine and you better love selling wine because that's your job. But I think you also need to look at what's the end market? What are people going to buy? How hard is it going to get there? Because it's a lot of fun to make something. If you don't make any money at some point along the way, you're going to fail. What's exactly? Yeah. It's got to be sustainable. And not that it's all about money for sure, but you got to love it. You got to be able to do it well, and you got to be able to make some money so it's a sustainable business. Yeah, yeah. So it's like love something, passion for it, and then you say like your first objective is like figure out and test if you can sell that. Yeah, exactly. You and, and, and then you know, then there's the perseverance of of staying with it, right? It's try, fail, iterate, try, fail, iterate. Not to go down the cliche of of failure, but to the extent that you can look at what you're doing and then apply the lessons you've learned in terms of this market didn't work, this product didn't work. As long as you're enjoying that process and you're moving in a direction and it's sort of self-sustainable, then you have a long-term business. If it's mm -hmm. if you can't make money from it, that's not a viable business model, you may have a great time, but it's going to be a short-term endeavor. There you go. Words of wisdom from Mr. Okay. And look at, uh, oh my gosh, we see, yeah. Lisa this Hennessy. Yeah. The fr I think that besides doing the five questions, this is the first time you've made a... Uh, Let's go back to the first reason why I'm in this. <laughs> Stuff this like this, why. exactly. He is the CEO <laughs> and owner of Wine Country. Thank you, Lisa. Thank okay. you, Lisa. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Five questions, Michael Cam. Thanks, See you on the next Cheers. episode, guys. Cheers.